sharing live stream. <laughs> have to wait. And we are not live yet. So I wanted to tell you about my fake mac and cheese because I'm in love with it. I found it on Amazon from this girl and it's like called like big, big, it's like Hoosier Farms and it's uh, 25 calories a tablespoon um, and it's made with like a whey protein okay. and it, it, if you squint, like, you know, you're not t having the real thing, but if you squint, it kind of tastes like that old craft mac and cheese. Okay. That's and it cool. satisfies that inner kid in me. So it we're makes me happy. Live, okay. You can talk <laughs> about later, but yeah, we're going in. Okay. Go live now. And we are live. So we're streaming on Facebook. No, it's not yet going. It's set, setting up your meeting for Facebook live. So it's always going in a little bit of a delay. Let's see. And I think we are live. Yes, we are live on Facebook. Good. Okay. So hello, hello, Brandy. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. So let me do my <laughs> uh, my spiel that I do every time I have a facility. Okay. Talk. So um, for Posality today, it's again, we bring position, positivity and vitality together. And um, we work on these three values, um, position is ergonomics, how you move correctly, and that can be in any way uh, mm -hmm. possible through your life. And I'm working on my Healthy Workspace Masterclass, which you will see more about in the group. And I will definitely be promoting that uh, until you sign up <laughs> and then positivity means the positive mindset goal setting how to positive influence yourself and others vitality is everything to do with movement movement awareness through exercise and then we always uh, try through the positivity talks represent these three values and how they occur in somebody's life and I keep scrolling my mouse, but I'm on my own, which doesn't work. <laughs> Today, we I introduced to you Brandy. And Brandy is a really awesome lady who is uh, like, my God, I think when you train, you you would kill me. Um, <laughs> you, you go for it. Um, if I see when you're on your, um, uh, your um, peloton, peloton. <laughs> like, that's one of the reasons I want one too. Um, so, and we are definitely long distance uh, phone call buddies and it's absolutely fun and laughter when we uh, <laughs> talk to each other and, um, and, and then the best thing is you live in New Orleans, which is just, um, <laughs> yeah, I need to come and visit you. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, I've never been there and I, yeah, just, just the way, yeah, it's just a, a, a really nice place to visit and live, I think too. It's a great city. I'm from here. I was born here. Um, and there's just so much music and art and culture. Um, at the same time, there's this, there's a sense of history and place here. Um, yeah. it's one of the, it's one of America's oldest cities. It's oh, over 300 yeah. years yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah. Must be. Um, so there's a lot of feel to new Orleans. It's very similar to almost European, but it's, it's actually, in my opinion, more Caribbean of a feel. Okay. Um, so it's like a cross between like a, of French, Spain, and um, some Caribbean influence. And a lot of that has to do with like old shipping trades and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah. But one thing about New Orleans is we absolutely love our food. Um, so you kind of grow up, you know, with there's different seasons right now, we would be going into like Jazz Fest with April um, and May coming up. Um, and every season has like a different um, food that you kind of celebrate. We just okay. had Easter, of course. Um, but right now it's crawfish season. So everyone's having crawfish boils. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of fun to get together with your friends like that. I know in the North there's like clam bakes and things like that. So it's very similar. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. If you're watching this, uh, welcome. And uh, if you replay, let us know that you're watching it later. And just let's get started. Brandy, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Who are you? <laughs> so I'm from New Orleans. I went to Tulane um, and I studied biomedical engineering. 
Um, so I've always loved health and wellness and fitness. Um, I was a track and field athlete. I threw um, javelin and discus. Um, so for me, I, I've always kind of loved that feeling of explosive power. Um, so I later went into powerlifting. Um, and now I'm really just training um, for my health and for my well-being um, to live a long life and to be a good, healthy weight. Um, mm -hmm. Eventually, I think hopefully next year, I'll be ready to compete um, on stage, maybe in figure. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be a lot of fun for me. Yeah, yeah. I hope that you can join the stage one day, huh? Yeah. yeah. So as you know, Pozality stands for Position, Positivity, and Vitality. On our last call, we talked about how ergonomics haven't really evolved with the homo sapiens because everything is basically sized for a five foot seven men. Yeah. And we experience this in cars, for example, but you also see it on the work floor as an engineer. So can you tell us a little bit more about You absolutely that? see that as an engineer. Um, you know, I, I'm gratefully a woman who's a little bit taller. Um, so a lot of men's equipment tends to fit me. Um, but a lot of times you'll notice that it does not fit women because it wasn't designed for women. Um, so it's something I'm a huge advocate for, which is if you're going to do some work on your house or, you know, any kind of positioning like that, or even if you're in the workforce, um, and you need specialty equipment, advocate for yourself, ask for it. Um, one of my big examples of that is fall arrest equipment. So fall arrest equipment, and this actually applies to larger men as well. Um, fall arrest equipment is not designed for someone who's over 250 pounds. It's rarely designed for someone over 220. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're a larger man, absolutely don't be ashamed, like ask your construction manager, your project manager for the right equipment. Um, and if not buy it for yourself, because $200 of fall arrest equipment is worth so much more yeah, um, so to you lot. in the long term. Um, so it, it's critically important. And I think like you would think over time that because people are taller and men are like five, nine, six feet, like, yeah. Uh, uh, and women are getting taller from five, like, of course you, you have smaller women, but women overall getting taller, people getting taller. Basically. Yeah. But and if you look at the old BMI tables, it's the same thing. The, the BMI table hasn't changed. No. Um, so it's just something that I think we need to advocate for. Honestly, I challenge you just go home and check your like normal stuff, like a ladder. Like you, a lot of us use a ladder to change a light bulb look at what it says on there on the weight limit, you know, and you might be surprised. It, it might be lower or higher than what you thought it was. I was even talking to uh, I, uh, uh, friends of ours. Uh, he built like the, the husband builds uh, kitchens and, and mm -hmm. cabinets and everything. And I said, so you measure, you discuss <laughs> how tall the family is where you make your, um, yeah. your furniture. He's like, no, it's cost like it's just right. like regular. I said that's not what it's supposed to be for me. Like yeah. I'm five seven, so right. everything is skater to me. But right for my husband and my son and my daughter, even when she was living here, how many times that kid, those kids hit their head against the top oh. covers because yeah, it's not made for their height and. And or they have to bend over, or, or if they stand up, they hit something. And in in our kitchen in Belgium, we made it so that when we put a like when we have something on the stove, we can stand up straight, like they my husband can stand yeah. up straight and our kids too. And when we put something in the sink, we can stand up straight. So the, the yeah. level is higher. And that, and it's so easy to fix, but like you said, nobody takes time cars are like i said also cars are not made uh sometimes no. for people that are taller i uh when i was looking for another car i like for me like i said i can go with a smaller car but my family yeah. can fit in it they would yeah. put their head against the ceiling like and you you would think it would have changed over time but i guess yeah we're not in that position yet so definitely like you said speaking up is very important uh, yeah. to get your point across and to hopefully in the future make those very important changes advocate for yourself and you know obviously if it's your home and you're putting furniture in it you know and, and this is a choice and you as someone who's a body positioning expert can agree mm -hmm. um it's your money, you know, spend it to be comfortable. I mean, obviously you want to have a beautiful home, but just because it's beautiful doesn't mean it can't actually function as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's also like when I see sometimes you see those uh, shows on HDTV with the, mm -hmm. like where they bring in the furniture and those high end yeah. homes and then they have an office and then they have this like fuzzy chair. Right. <laughs> And then I'm like, what are these interior designers thinking? I'm like, I'm sure they are great and they got, they probably got pushed by the owner, but hey, I'm sure that they can make that fuzzy chair in a very ergonomical, nice, fully uh, like correctly um, done chair too. Yeah. Like, I'm sure they can design something that works for your, like that works with you and that at least don't give you uh, uh, a sore back or other stuff so it's it's yeah i i that's beyond it's just something to think about you know next time you're upgrading your furniture you know look about you know not just how it's going to look but how it's going to function how it supports your body and whether or not you're going to be in that position for many hours you know and if you really want to have that fuzzy thing put something over it right <laughs> you, can, you can i'm sure those designers can make something that is like design and still looks great and it's also helpful you know it's funny you say that i was just thinking they should have like small medium and tall furniture just like they have like small medium and large clothing you know it should fit yeah i i'm at this point but i'm not far enough in my business that my husband already said to me because i i vent to him about this mm -hmm. stuff all the time <laughs> like you need to start create like you need to make your own design suit i said yeah but i need kind of like i cannot do that i yeah. know what i want and what is good but i cannot make those things i need like a, an architect or an interior designer to work with this work with me on partner this. with someone who does custom furniture you know yeah yeah so i i i'm like first i want to do the yeah get myself <laughs> and then i can start starting a a line of furniture yeah uh, but we're not there yet in the future let's hope um, i love it yeah uh let's see uh yeah so our conversations from text to calls are always infused with live laugh and love you are a very <laughs> strong personality and i love that about you now we also talk about how you as a woman in a man's world with the engineering world, unfortunately, which the engineering world, unfortunately, still is, represent the strength and the determination we women have. So tell me, how do you woman up to that man's world? <laughs> you know, I think it's um, important to just find your authentic voice. People respond to good intentions and to authenticity. Um, be a master of your craft um, and always don't be afraid to ask questions, right? So don't show up, this is going to sound terrible, but this is my honest opinion. Don't show up as a woman, you know, show up as yourself. Don't show up as a man or who you think you should be showing up as. Just show up as yourself and show up as an engineer. Um, yeah. I think it's really funny because I love the word sailor because there's not like a female form of sailor or like a male form of sailor. It's just a sailor. Like, this is who you are. This is what you do. This is what you execute, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's that served me well, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and just always be afraid, don't be afraid to, to engage and, and make sure that, you know, your voice is valued. Um, diversity doesn't come in just what you look like or the color of your skin or anything like that, or male or female, um, or any other choice. Yeah. It really is diversity in the form of thought. And that's what you're hired for. You know, I'm paid for my opinion. I'm paid for my knowledge. Yeah. And that's what you need to bring to the table consistently. Yeah. And if that's what you bring to the table consistently, that in itself creates more respect and value for your position and, and what you bring to the table. I think even now uh, when they go into hiring people, I think they, um, I'm not sure, like I, I'm not sure if name, like of course name probably will still be there, um, but definitely not uh, age and, and uh, um, for people when they apply for a job. And I think maybe name shouldn't be there either. Just look at the person's resume and then from there on invite them and then you will see who they yeah. are. And um, because I, 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 in this world and certainly now with the diversity getting bigger and bigger and yeah. I honestly say my knowledge is not far <laughs> enough to fully understand everything that's going on, but I, I do respect every human 
And I think every human has their qualities. And if they apply for a job, that's, that's um, their quality should be, be um, valued, not how they look or who they are, because you can, you never know. I, this is a story that I had now that I remember it. Um, mm -hmm. A while back in my practice in Belgium, I had a young girl and she was a um, very smart young woman and and she had her own, own, own style. She came in with dreadlocks, beautiful. Like she, she told me once that she take, like it took her like two days to wash these things. Like she had a yeah. beautiful bunch of dreadlocks, beautiful. Like, um, and she was a beautiful young woman. She. She dressed very colorful and I don't remember, she had a job as a, she had a pretty good job. I don't remember, recall what it was again, but she had a lot of responsibility. And so she was in my practice and an older lady was waiting to be the next to come in. And my friend, my girl left and this woman comes in and she's like, I just walked out and I'm like, excuse me? Oh. So, oh yeah oh yeah and I was like so taken aback I said look you don't know this girl she's really smart and I don't have to defend her but right I said she you don't um judge a book by its cover because right. you don't know her and you have no way there is no like you're not in the right place to judge her um she like yeah so like you should not be judged and that always reminded me that you never know who you have in front of you and it doesn't matter how somebody looks it's what like the value they bring that's so right. important and um i till this day when i think about that girl she she once even helped me out because i had somebody who would call me at, at eight o'clock and not talk or talk like like yeah know. and she even um one day took over the phone from, from me and started giving oh. that person his peace of mind and uh, <laughs> he figured out who, who it was. She yeah. went to, like she figured out um, uh, by my phone bill and she mm -hmm. went through and figured that out for me. So she was really like, wow. It's like, yeah. yeah. So never judge a book by its cover. Okay. I think a lot of um, older people have internalized, I, I say older people, but I think you know, it hurts me more when it's a, when it's a woman, mm -hmm. um, because it's like, I think that, you know, as women, we become judged on a certain level more harshly. Mm -hmm. Um, so it kind of almost hurts my feelings more when it's an older woman who does that. But I also try to have compassion for the fact that I think that they've internalized a lot of toxicity and a lot mm -hmm. of previously held beliefs that probably don't even serve them anymore. Um, but that's just, you know, the paradigms that they grew up with. So that's just what they also project into the world. Yeah. I, um, yesterday I had a call with my uncle who is 83 years old. Yeah. And we're talking about uh, the women's cycling. In Belgium, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a big sport. But it is. I thought you guys just built a track in the, in the trees. No, no, yeah, 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 you sent me that. Yeah, but so cycling is a big thing and there is like big, the Tour de France you have and it starts, most of the time it starts in Belgium and you have all these like courses, they call them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so they started, inter like they started um, broadcasting the women. And, uh, and we, we've been talking about this for weeks on end now about the soccer coming up more for women. And, and my uncle, 83 year old man, says yeah. it's about time like let those women show what they got let go. it's about time i'm like yes that's i love it of him. like he's like yeah we you're in a, if you have a, like in a relationship too it's like you're with two people and yep. you're equal partners mm -hmm. so that's how it's supposed to be it's yeah that the time of the woman at the at the stove and like in the household that's gone that's not yeah. these times anymore and this man is 83 years old so i'm like wow like I, i'm so like i love him he's the sweetest so that's so sweet i love that yeah yeah he's he's just a gem um my uh, his wife was my godmother so I oh they never had kids but um but yeah. you guys were close yeah yeah she was like a second mom to me yeah so i promised when my aunt passed away that i would like i i promised her but i was gonna do it anyway that i like mm -hmm. she was always afraid that 
I would lose contact with my uncle. I'm like, no, nah, that's not gonna happen. And I think we we're, we're even closer now than when my aunt was alive, which is very strange. Oh. I call him every week. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. So it's like, it's our Sundays. He even says to his friends, like if they call or they take him somewhere, like I got to get home. Patricia's going. I got to get home. I have a call. Yeah, I have a call. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. So that's always nice. Okay. Uh, let's see where we are. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Vitality. Being vital is also a very important value of causality. So you are on a health journey, making changes on a daily basis. <laughs> What do you do and what do you enjoy the most about being on this journey? Um, I love seeing progress. I love seeing the results. I love seeing um, what we call the non-scale victories and the scale victories. Um, I love being able to, I call it unlocking, almost like the gamification of it. Um, I love being able to unlock different things that I, I had done previously, but then I gained weight and I couldn't do anymore. Um, so I love being able to bike for an hour now and I, I couldn't do that before. I just didn't have the cardio endurance to do it. So I, I worked up to doing it and it took, <laughs> I mean, it took eight weeks. I wasn't going super hard, but it, it took a little bit of time and being, I almost want to say like, I call it loving movement. Um, because I'm not doing it to punish myself. I'm doing it because I love myself and I enjoy it. Um, and I've also learned, you know, to try different things that I, I will tell you, I never took spin class until after I bought my Peloton. Um, I was terrified. I was really intimidated, honestly, to go to Soul Cycle um, or anything like that. And I had wanted to go. I had friends that had gone, um, but I was just genuinely intimidated by it. I was like, well, I don't look like those girls. Um, and I just thought it would hurt. And I just thought that I wouldn't be able to make, you know, 10 minutes of the class. You know, I get on a stair stepper and I'm out of breath. So I'm like, I don't, you know, I didn't want to embarrass myself. And when you're in a class environment, it's like, well, you're stuck there for an hour. I'm like, we're, we're locked and loaded. Yeah. Um, so there's not a lot of, in that kind of environment, there's not a lot of grace for failure, you know, or for if you're not already at that level. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. They always expect that you can do a certain thing. I, I, um, I had a conversation with one of my clients this week and we were talking about a, a bar class. Um, mm -hmm. she, I love bar classes. Those are fun. She said, yeah, because I'm, I have to uh, uh, get my CCs back up and I was thinking of doing a, tra a certification on that. And she's like, she, I, she took one and, and she wasn't in the shape as the majority of the, the ladies in class and the, the instructor kind of took to her to help her but she took it in like the way she tried to help her was not the way you should help a client like you need to like don't yell at them come on you can do it you can do it if you see that the client is slowly like sinking you need to be like okay let's modify it and let's get you through this class in that mindset yeah. so that you know like i i i always uh, when i teach as well i always try to go with I think this is wrong to say the weakest link, but the newer, the newer client, yeah. the more, the, the less experienced client and just try to focus a little bit more and help them through the class with, with what I see they can do so that at least they feel that they are succeeding. Whereas the rest of the group, I will kind of let go and say, okay, you got this, you can go. I would say, yeah, you need, you need to be, you need to, you need to make sure that everybody feels comfortable yeah and i uh, i always try to do that it's not always easy but i always try to make that distinguish like that i i um yeah so that everybody sees feels okay i have accomplished this class i can yeah. do this with whatever i am whoever i am and whatever whatever skills i have so. And, and I love that about you. I love how welcoming you are and patient. Um, and I think those are the qualities that definitely draw people of all levels to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important when you are a fitness instructor to, and I think everyone understands this, but to, to modify the approach, some people respond well to get after it, go for it, you know, yeah, and, you and other people respond well to, um, I call it kind of just giving grace, like letting them push more when they need to push more. And I think that's really about the individual approach to that client. And if you can meet with them beforehand and kind of learn more and gain that trust, yeah, um, that works really well. I've, I've had both. I've had some where I've had a really great engagement with a trainer and I've had others where I'm like, oh, this is, this is not, it has to <laughs> not work. where I need to be. Some, some, 
sometimes it's just you don't connect and that's yeah fine. and that's okay that is that is okay um yeah. i i always say it's almost like dating you know just because they're not a good fit for you doesn't mean that they're not a good fit for someone else and yeah. that's okay you, you know it's I think fitness is really a personal journey and it's a lot about trying on different things and making it fun for you and whatever is fun for you. Keep doing that. That's why I always like my, my, my fat fit fun. I always uh, <laughs> call it because I, uh, I also, when I teach, I will say, Oh, I have something fun. It's something new. It's I love that. For, oh, there she goes again. And I, <laughs> Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, oh, if Patricia says fun, you know what's gonna happen, huh? She well, thinks it's fun. <laughs> I love weightlifting. I love it. I really do, and that that makes me feel good. And that that's one of the things I said when I started talking to you is I love explosive strength. I love the way that feels. Um, and I've never liked cardio, like no. And and I'm I'm in the process of loving it. I'm in the process of enjoying it you know in high school i ran cross country and i don't know how i ran six miles a day like that baffles me now i'm like what, what were they feeding me like i don't yeah. know why oh, work him up <laughs> to you yeah i know like i have the same like i run too and i i spoke with a cousin of mine a few weeks ago and he does these uh, ultra runs yeah and that's he, amazing yeah but he does them um, he doesn't want, like it's not about being first it's about enjoying the journey like the mm -hmm. run and I started looking at it like that. Now, I must honestly say, I'm looking outside now. My neighborhood is new and there is not much in this area immediately to run. So I'm kind of getting bored of the environment because I always see the same thing. But I do know where he's getting at. That yeah. you have to enjoy the run. Not so much like I want to, like I ran. So I wanted to get do a 5K in under 30 minutes. That yep. was my goal, because, not because I wanted to run 5K under 30 minutes, because I wanted it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. The faster I could oh. go, the faster it was over. So now yeah. I have another mindset and like, let's enjoy this run. Let's look what yeah. where we're at and look at, at the environment, look at the trees. There's not many, but look at the clouds and the birds and hear the, the animals and and so now I'm running more like that, which definitely helped me. And I'm still running fast. So that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> I am like 30 minutes. Let's get this done. Have I'm, you ever done a, um, a triathlon or do you want to do one? Does that inspire you? Really? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really admire people who can do that. I would not mind swimming, running and biking separately. <laughs> not all together no just because like maybe i would but uh, like you go from swimming to to running don't you or i what? believe you go from swimming to biking and then the bike to the run so you're soaking i might wet. be wrong i might be wrong like anyway for at some point you're soaking wet and you're doing something else yeah, you, you start with the swim because the idea is like you don't want to be totally um, exhausted and, and possibly drown. So they have you swim first. Yeah, so you swim first and you're soaking wet and then you have to like ride yeah. with, with your wet butt on the bike. Oh my God. Well, you change. They, they give you the opportunity to kind of like switch kind of gear a bit and towel off. You can't. Uh, you can't oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I, there's like a changing kind of station, you know, and people have different kits. So I don't I, know. I need to go and see one and, and at the changing. Well, you're right. I mean, I personally would probably end up with wet shorts, you know, I would probably change my top and I'd have wet shorts, you know, and go. Yeah. yeah. And then, the, then you run with the shoes, wet, uh, the socks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would not mind doing, like I said, doing it if the wet part could, like if you could run to those. You can try people. off though. We can figure it out. I yeah. haven't done a triathlon, but we're going to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we should, because if we could run through those tunnels, you know, that they have in Disney that you walk in and it's yeah. like the blowers like something like yeah. that so i'm dry before i get on my whatever next if you do a triathlon i'll bring a big fan and we're gonna fan you <laughs> like a blow dryer we're gonna get you ready yes okay <laughs> okay oh geez what did i just say yeah well like oh yeah why not why not 
But then I need that Peloton, definitely, to start bulking. I need to talk to my husband again. I think everybody by now knows that I want a Peloton, except for- I'm happy to ride with you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had like, yeah, and I, like you can also ride with each other, like you can ride and stimulate, like motivate each other. Yeah. Oh, God, I would love to kick your butt. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't be so sure i've been doing it for a little while now i've built up some fun. i kick yours or whatever as long as it's we really fun it's it's fun. super fun and you give high fives to other people and um i schedule rides with friends too so this afternoon i have a friend that i'm gonna ride with and tomorrow i have someone i'm gonna ride with so it's also like meeting someone at the gym but we're not in the same city so it's also nice to you know connect that way yeah i need to talk to my husband <laughs> Okay, let's see what our next question is. So healthy body through movement is very important, yet you also have to oops, uh, take care of the inside. I know you stick to plan most of the times and I would like, like to know a bit more about that. Then second, what's your favorite guilty pleasure when it comes to food? Uh, we have to stay, why did I say PG-13? I don't know. No. <laughs> I um I love ice cream. Ice cream is my favorite. So um I love Halo Top and I subscribe to the 80 for the 20 on the plan. So 80% of the time I'm on the plan, 20% not. Mm -hmm. But I know that I love ice cream so much that just by always planning it and knowing it's an option to me if I need it. Um, the other thing I keep in my freezer is an Udi's sweet potato crust um, barbecue chicken pizza. And if I eat the whole pizza, it's 800 calories and I think 20 grams of protein. Um, so, you know, even, yeah. even if I have it as like my one thing and I have like two other smaller meals later, I'm still not going to be totally out of my macro count. So yeah. it's like a healthy cheat. Right. Um, but it makes me feel satisfied and it tastes good. And for me, it's really important that what I eat is healthy and it's fuel and it tastes good. Um, and it's also about like how it makes me feel, you know, I don't want to feel like a food hangover later. I want the food to be able to fuel me from activity. And when you're a former athlete, like that definitely computes really well of, you know, what you eat in your body translates to your performance. Yeah. Um, so now it's really about, and I've never trained that way, but now I'm, I'm training for aesthetics. So it's, well, how does that make my hourglass look? You know, how does that make my waist smaller? Are my shoulders the right size? You know, am I building muscle? Am I reducing fat? Am I recomping my body in the way that I want to be able to look the way that I want and feel good and healthy in? Can you post later on about the pizza and the halota? Now, when you do the, when you have the ice cream, do you use that as a snack then? And you just I, I, I use it as a snack. Um, it depends on the day and it depends on, you know, what it is, but what something that's different is I'm eating it because I want that. I'm not eating it because I'm trying to hide from a feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's because I, when I feel like ice cream, I, what I do, I take protein powder, I take ice cubes and I blend them together. Yeah. So it's like a gooey ice creamish thing, but uh, yeah. I, I haven't really eat I did I eat a little top I think one time but it's been I'll do while. something similar to that I'll grab a Greek yogurt and I do Greek yogurt with ice cubes and I do oh I love this I have a half unsweetened half coconut milk half almond milk and it's 35 calories for the whole cup yeah. so if I want something creamier I'll do a Greek yogurt which I, I can have anyway so I'll do a Greek yogurt plus my protein powder, plus just enough, either a half cup or a cup of my, I call it my half and half. It's not real half and half. It's half coconut, half almond. It's from Silk. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll put that in my blender with some fruit in it and it, it it's super thick and it's delicious. Okay. That's supposed to be so that people have Because those are good snacks and they're healthy and you get yeah. a lot of protein in like that for me that's a meal replacement for me i love blackberries so i'll put blackberries on top um and for me i love that yeah 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 that's, that's in summer you can do pineapple and pineapple is actually really good for you it's got um bromelain in it which is um it's the it's essentially the pineapple enzyme which actually translates to a really good digestive enzyme mm -hmm. so if you're having like a ground meat which i love bison a lot of times i'll try to pair that with a pineapple oh yeah by the way, we eat, and now a lot of people will be like, ooh, my son eats pineapple pizza. Like, it's a year, like we had it in, in Belgium. Like, like every, every pizzeria has it. I 
like it. Here it's like, oh, <laughs> you cannot do pizza with pineapple. <laughs> You know, every family's different. If you don't like it, it's on half the pizza. Just don't eat my side, you know, it's fine. There. Okay, Our, my last question is one that I all ask all my uh, my personality talkers. And it is what fuels are better, warms your soul? How do you keep yourself mentally healthy? You know, honestly, it's, it's people like you. It's connecting with um, friends like you, honestly. Um, text messages, phone calls. Um, it's that's just really what it is it's connecting to people who it's surrounding yourself with positivity it's making the right environment you're not going to take a beautiful like say you bought a beautiful exotic flower at a plant nursery you know i mean some of the rare ones are like hundreds of dollars you're not going to take that and plant it in a landfill you're going to go home and you're going to get a pot of dirt the best dirt you're going to have and you're going to water it and love it and give it sunshine so i think of myself that i'm a beautiful flower and i need water and i need sunshine and i need love and attention Mm -hmm. that's it you know you have to take care of yourself yes and when you when you need something say something yes you know, that's so important in your mind mm -hmm. they're not especially you know and i really learned that over COVID. no one's gonna come no one's coming looking for you no if you need help you need to call you need to reach out and it's great when somebody does reach out and call and i get so surprised and felt feel so cared for i'm like oh wow that's oh that's very nice but I think I'm more grateful for it because I genuinely never expected it. Yeah. And, and that's true what you say. You need to, and, and even before COVID, you need to be, if you, like, it's not that people don't want to help you or don't want to talk to you. It's just life gets in the way. Yeah. And they're so busy and, yeah. and with their family, with their kids, with their work, with whatever. Yeah. And, and it's not, they will think about you. I have, like, I think yeah. about a lot of people, but then the day goes by and, and yeah. And so I, I have a friend now who's really in a, in a more difficult situation and I tell her, call me. It's not that I, and also sometimes you don't know when it's a good time to call them yeah. because they're working or there is things going on. And it's, it's not that I, I don't want to, um, but I definitely like if somebody calls me uh, or tells me, hey, call me to because I need to talk to you. I'm like, I, I'm there. I'll, I'll, pick up, I'll pick up that phone and I'll call because that's where we, why we are there. And yeah, being, we, I was talking to my husband about it yesterday. Being an expat is uh, that we were like for. Yeah, now we're, we have a green card here, but still we, we, we have been expats for a long time and you always are the new one in town and you always have to make friends and, um, and you, you kind of need to keep connections and you need to keep those going. And, but I did learn that the friends I made throughout my, it's not travels, throughout my living abroad mm -hmm. or out of my home country, is that it doesn't matter for how long you haven't spoken with somebody. Yeah. Once you became friends and and you they suddenly now with social media, you know what is going on in people's life. And I think sometimes I don't talk to, for a year with somebody yeah. and I can just pick up the phone or something happens and we connect and all of a sudden say, hey, let's video call. And 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 it's like you never stop talking to each other. And I, I think Absolutely. that's how it should be. It's I like for um, hopefully for our 50th, I really want to go to Australia and have a very good friend living in Australia. Mm -hmm. And we don't talk all the time, but I know for sure if and, and she not like she's expecting us at some point. Oh wow. She's reminding me, hey, when are you coming? Like every once in a while it's just like when is, when are you coming yeah uh, so i know if i text her or call her like call her tomorrow and say hey we're coming then she will be like okay my door is open Let and i love friends like that because yeah. I, I i see that you know i've moved a lot when i was little too but i can tell you that i have friends that i haven't spoken to in a few months but when i do connect with them again it's like time hasn't passed you know mm -hmm. so for for those friendships, you know, I treasure them just as much as the ones that I see weekly. Honestly, yeah. I really do. I think even those that you don't see, they are, I, I think sometimes I value them more because I know they're <laughs> always going to be there. Yeah. Those are the people that always are going to be there. And um, I, yeah, I've made many friends like that. And I, 
And I remember when we first started our, our expat adventure, my, I had friends of mine say, what do you want to get? Like, do you want to get something out of it? What is it like? What do you get out of this? Because you're moving away from your family and, and you, you leave everything behind and, and you're, you don't know anyone where you are. And yes, that's true. But you also know as a family, you come together more like as a close knit family, the four of us. And um, one of the things I always said, look, whatever happens, if we move a few times, my kids will always, they do not have to go to a hotel ever if they don't want to. They will always, wherever they go in the world, I'm probably sure <laughs> that I know someone who will say, hey, come, we have a bed here or you can sleep on the couch. I'm pretty sure that I like know in the majority of the world, I know somebody that can, that will say, hey, we're, we're here and somebody that I know and that I can trust uh, with my kids. So like- But even if not, you probably know someone who knows someone, even just oh, like yeah. one, one separation, you know? And yeah. I can tell you that when I traveled a lot for work um, and I still do, so, well, not with COVID as much, but it really um, feels so much more like home if you can just connect and have a meal with a friendly face. Yeah. Even if it's someone who's a friend of a friend, just having that meal makes it feel home-like, you know, more like a little family. Yeah, we, my husband, when there is people coming from the company, uh, he always tries to go for dinner like once yeah. or twice with them. And uh, now uh, if they, like the people from India, uh, yeah, and the people from Belgium too, but like, in the, yeah, anyway, if they're coming, certainly the ones from India, he tends to like say, hey, let's go on a Sunday evening and I go along and they're always happy to see me because they know me, they've seen me, but they don't really know me, but they like, yeah. yeah. So it's always uh, 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 fun to, to meet up with them. And they, they have so much respect for the fact that we, when we lived in India, that we tried to adjust to, to their customs and that I still know a lot of things. And we went to an Indian restaurant and we were like looking at the food and I, and I said, I like this and like, and they basically said, why do we have to order? Let's <laughs> order. She knows her stuff. It's I love it. fine. I love that. Uh, I want to, um, I want to turn the tables on you because honestly, you're one of the most, um, well-traveled and disciplined people that I've ever met. Someone oh, who's really? extraordinarily positive and a great role model. So I really want to know, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? What keeps you so disciplined? What keeps you, what keeps your mind in the game, you know, um, week after week and day after week, you know, how do you do that? It's not always like that. I can <laughs> tell you that for sure. Um, oh, what I, what I do, what I like giving up is not an option. Mm -hmm. Kind of dipping down is optional. Like it happens. I'm human. Um, I have my moments, um, but I, when it comes to positivity, I, oh, I've been, I've been, um, let me tell you a story. <laughs> when we, when we left India, my mom just passed away. I had to bury my mom in I'm Belgium, sorry. go back to India, pack up go to Belgium, pack up there, move to the US. Oh. Then uh, by November, we were in a house and it was right before Thanksgiving. And I sat in the couch and I, I wrote, a, I wrote a, a, a whole chapter about it. And I was sitting in the couch and I was like, here I am. I buried my mom. I'm I have my, my dad died when I was seven, so I have no parents anymore. I have no job because I cannot work yet. My kids are in school. My husband is at work. I have never felt so without a purpose, so lost, so depressed. So um, I, I, and it went, I, it took me a year. We, we, we um, yeah, we then moved a year later to this house. It took me a year and I had, I was depressed. I was depressed. And, but I always, I never stopped eating. 
because I needed to fuel my body and I never stopped working out. The only thing that wasn't in the right place and that was only um, not towards my kids. Like I was always positive. I, I always was motivating towards my kids, towards my husband, but towards myself, I was fully drained. And I went at some point we were here I went so deep that my husband kind of didn't know what to do. And he, he gave me a hug because I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't, yeah, I was empty. I couldn't talk about it. And I asked him, I said, just hold it. And we made this, we made this our thing. If I cannot talk about it, just hold me. And then I realized that I, I could not let myself go this deep anymore because if I lose myself, even though my kids are now grown and my son is moving out soon, I, they still will always need me and my husband will always need me um, because I am like kind of the motor of our family. Um, I'm in a minute, I'm going to cry. And, oh. <laughs> and I, I realized that I needed to pick myself up and get myself back going and that I would never, like I promised myself that I would never allow myself to go that deep and that I would talk to my family when it would start going in that direction. Mm. And that I would surround myself <clears throat> with positive things, people, things, people that are positive because you can surround yourself with people, but you also have to build your environment positive. It's almost like yeah. what you, what you vibrate out comes back to you. So if you vibrate negativity, negativity comes out, it comes back to you. So I, I, um, promised myself that I would not do that anymore and that there's too much too much at risk when I let myself go that much um so yeah so I always look at the bright side the glass half full I always I I don't like to let people down I even if I know I've I've experienced a lot I um I've been through a lot since I was little and um, I've been surrounded with strong women, um, which was good. So I, I know that we are important. Now I know that I had to kind of teach myself again and that if I like let myself go, then the people that surround me can let themselves go and you should not let yourself go. You need to keep control over your life and your actions and uh, being positive is, is a big deal in that. I, um, um, yeah, I try to, yeah, be a, be in a, like an inspiration. No, that's not what I gave aim for, but I, I try to be a good example so that I, I hope that people feed off of my positivity because that's what you need. Yeah. Yeah. There I you love go. That. That's a beautiful <laughs> answer. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay. Now back to me. Where are we? Last one. Is there anything else you want us to know about you or that you as an inspiring, strong and beautiful young lady can tell us? <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that mental health is important. And I think that a diet and exercise is never going to work if you don't also get your mindset right. Yeah. Um, so if you have trouble with mindset, journal, reach out to people. You might need therapy and that's okay. You yeah. know, be brave and do it for yourself. Yeah. Um, I've known several people. I've been blessed to have several people in my life who've lost 100, 200 pounds, mm -hmm. which is incredible. And the thing that they all have in common is that they definitely address their diet and their exercise, but they also address their mentality around how they approach not just their diet and exercise, but even how they approach their life. Yeah. Um, so the last thing I would leave you with is, you know, diets do work, you know, in terms of caloric deficit or changing yeah. what you 
I mean, yeah, that, that works. I mean, you, you'll, you'll see results. Um, but the difference is what, what lasts for you and what becomes a lifestyle and what's a choice for you. Right. You have to have that mindset. You have to have like, you kind of, it's like what they say is if you want to, you, you, um, you dress for the position you apply for, or you yeah. want to have, not you apply yeah. for what you want to have. So you kind of have to focus your mindset to the body or yep. the lifestyle that you want to have. Absolutely. And, um, that will help a lot. Um, you know, it's funny you just said dress for success because I was just thinking about the fact that, you know, I've gone to the gym before and I've seen overweight people and part of me, you know, because I've been one, I, you know, I still am one. I want to go up to them and just, you know, tell them something, but I know that's not my place, right? Don't go to people who don't ask you for help. That's silly. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were to say something to them, it would be don't wear what you're comfortable in, but also go buy something that you feel fire in, you know? go wear something that brings you joy. You know, I've worn leggings that look maybe ridiculous to someone else, but I love them, you know? And when I love them, I have confidence in them and I like the way my body moves in them. So, so really it's just like, you know, F everyone else, honestly, yeah. you're doing it for you anyway. I, um, I've I seen people it. literally show up in like torn clothing. And I don't know if that's the only thing they have, but I get the feeling that they're hiding themselves in it. You know, does that make sense? I, no, that does make a lot of sense. I tell my clients, and this is so funny that you mentioned this, like if they, if you come to work out and you wear something that fits you better, that looks nice, like, hey, a lot, like I know a lot of, how do you, curvy ladies that mm -hmm. have a perfect hourglass hey show it off what's wrong with showing it off like if you have to internalize we've internalized that our body's wrong for whatever reason for whatever yeah. it, a lot of times it comes from your mother mm -hmm. you know um there's you know if you think about it it goes back to like those early fitting room kind of like getting ready for school and they're like oh those jeans are too tight or you know i don't mm -hmm. like the way that makes your butt look big so a lot of times they imprint on you some of their body insecurities i know i carry that with me so mm -hmm. It's a lot of that goes back to that mindset and relearning how I look at my body, how I talk to myself about my body. And you also an how I, lady. you have an hourglass. Thank you. <laughs> and also <laughs> how I let other people talk about my body. You know, there was a gentleman who was at the gym today and he said something very ugly to me. And um, honestly, you wouldn't even have known it, you know, on this conversation with me, because that's how much his opinion didn't matter. I was like, he's literally, he's like off. He's, I literally thought to myself, he is really mad that he's like five foot four. Like he was, he was a shorter gentleman. And I literally thought to myself, I was like that poor little guy. Like, he's just really mad he's short. Like he told me as I was going on the treadmill, he's like, oh, are you getting ready to go on the farm? And I was like, excuse me. And he's like, yeah, because you're a cow. And I'm like, wow brave of you like mighty brave <laughs> oh my god i would have oh yeah I he was on his way out and i guess he just decided he wanted to make someone else feel bad but it didn't work i just put my headphones on and i was like that's unfortunate like hmm. <gasps> actually oh what i did say to him was a little ugly i asked him i was like well have you seen your mother lately um but that was the ugly coming out in me <laughs> that was not the nice one <laughs> was action reaction the, the instant reaction that i verbally said to him was well have you seen your mother lately um but that, that was wasn't very nice but no. i mean that that was the reality what he said. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> but okay. honestly you know you 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 i'm there for myself i'm not there for him i'm not there for you know his comments so i don't speak to myself that way and i don't let other people speak to me that way either no no, no that's not Wow. Oh, I should have been there. I would have kicked it <laughs> wow. No, if they would like, oh my God, if they would have said something to me like, oh my God, I, oh no, 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 no. But you know, when, it's really funny you say that because when you're in the moment, when it happens to you, like if nothing else, like you like to think that you're going to be, you know, a fighter and, mm -hmm. and maybe I did fight back, but for me, really, I just, um, one, I didn't care. And at the other end of it, I was just more shocked. I was like, wow, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. Um, I think when it happens to someone else, like if it was a friend of mine, like if he said something to you, I would have been like, you're. That's why I said, like, if I was there, I would have 
probably like kicked us a little behind and, <laughs> you know oh wow. so it is what it is i think that was more of a reflection of him than me because yeah. i'm at a low I'm, I'm i've lost 60 pounds you know so i'm at a much lower weight than i was before and yeah. i know that he's seen me before um and i've not had an interaction with him but you know that's what he chose to tell me today you always you always have those oh uh, yeah and it and it's yeah it's yeah i have no words for this this is this is not this is not something that people people should know better and be more respectful and i, I agree but that's the world you live in you you're always going to be exposed to to good and bad and i think you just have to it's like raising a child you know, you can't shield them from all the bad in the world, no. but you can teach them how to navigate better and how to make good choices and how to have a solid sense of center. So, you know, I think when you're losing weight, it's really this, the shedding process. Yeah. And you do feel to a certain extent more exposed to the world because a lot of people, even friends and family, almost especially friends and family yeah. and oh. making comments to you. Yeah. And some of them, depending on the day can either feel really good or it can hurt and it can be the same words yeah but it can also like just hit you different if that makes sense yeah so. it's, it's like with with me i'm so now like i'm training as a bikini competitor and there's just people out there that think that you look like this and are seven percent or ten percent uh, fat all year right. long and that's, that's just not reality. Ridiculous. That's not reality. And uh, people don't understand that. You, they think that you can just turn around, put that bikini on, and look like you're on stage. That's not. That's, as but a, that's not. Be. That's frankly, honestly, that's not normal in nature. Think about flowers. Think about trees. Yeah. Trees have a time that they rest. They lose their leaves. That's yeah. their building time, right? They're yeah. gonna. They're gonna go into the ground more. They're gonna root you know, and they're going to get their stores up and that, that's just what they do. They shed and then they bloom again in spring. And it's just like that in the bikini world, you know, there's going to be a time where you're going to be in a building phase. Yeah. And you might be shedding in that phase or you might be building, but that's your phase. Right. And then that's not your showtime phase. Your showtime phase is when you bloom and that's fine. Yeah. yeah and that's just a week. Like that's like literally a week before competing and and then you have your competition and then it goes back up. So it's like if a moment in time, and that is not only like that's for bikini, that's for all the competitions and yeah. for all sports. It's all sports. Like, you're, you're not at Olympic level all year round. You're yeah. at striking distance, Yeah. but you're not, like you're not gonna totally fall off. No. I mean, sometimes you get injured, but yeah. if, you, if you try to maintain a very, very high level of athleticism or physique, you're gonna burn yourself out one yeah. way or the other. It's just not sustainable. No. You can you can sustain a high level, but you're not gonna be at peak performance. No. no, you know, and I think that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. So you need that time to yeah go back in, re yeah refuel yourself and rebuild and then shine again. So and that's for for all um, all sports and. Uh, People need, yeah, I guess if you don't know, you don't understand, um, but um, that doesn't mean that people have to be mean about it. Um, I think that just comes from a, a, an uglier place in themselves. I don't know what his day was like, you know, I didn't let it bother my day. No. Okay, so let's end it here. Uh, so it was really nice talking to you. It was always a pleasure with you. Yeah, it was so much fun. I learned a lot. I hope the audience learned a lot too. This video is gonna stay on and I, if it's okay with you, I'm probably gonna try to post it on, on my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, and then uh, so that people can watch it because I like every, like you and every guest that I have there, <laughs> like always bring something nice and, and entertaining and fun to the table. So I'm uh, um, it was a real pleasure um, having this personality talks with you. It's always good to connect with you, Patricia. You're fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so now I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to try to log us <laughs> off of uh, Facebook. Wait a minute. Oh my God. Stop live stream. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. I think we're off. I'm going to stop recording. Okay.